Why are kids so emotional and impulsive than adults? How can we help them manage their feelings and emotions? Hi everyone, this is Grace. Welcome to my channel. So today we're going to talk about one of the most complicated organs in the human body, the brain. But why is it even important for us, including our children, to learn about the brain? Well, you see, everything we do, including how we feel, how we behave, how we respond to a particular situation, how we bond with one another is all controlled by this master controller. So when we understand how this complex machine works, we can understand ourselves and our kids better. But when we help our kids understand how the brain works, we can empower them to understand themselves and those around them better and also manage their feelings and emotions effectively. So in today's video, I'm going to help you learn a simple, easy to understand hand model of the brain, which was developed by Dr. Daniel Siegel, a professor of psychiatry at the UCLA School of Medicine that you can teach children, even children as young as two years old easily. So let's begin. You see, the human brain has three main parts. Let's talk about the three different parts of the brain first, and then we will talk about how it impacts our behavior and our kid's behavior and what we can do about it, okay? Now, make a fist and hold your arm like this. So the first part of the brain, which is your hindbrain, is represented by your forearm and your lower hand. Your forearm represents your spinal cord and your lower hand represents your brainstem. So this part of the brain, which is your hindbrain, is the first to develop, which means it is the part of the brain that a baby has at birth. And we call this part the reptilian part of the brain or the lizard brain because we share this part of the brain with reptiles. And this part of the brain is so primitive and its basic function is to make sure that you and I are alive and safe. So it does two main things. Number one is it controls our body's autonomic nervous system that regulates vital functions such as breathing, heart rate, digestion, etc. Things that we don't have control over. And number two is it's responsible for what we call the fight, flight, freeze response. If you are new to this term, well, it is our body's automatic reaction to danger. So for instance, when you see a tiger, you don't stop to count how many stripes the tiger has or how big it is or how cute it looks, right? But when you see a tiger, your heart starts beating fast, your muscles get tensed and you just take off or you simply freeze because you are so scared that you don't know what to do or if you're brave enough you get ready to fight the tiger and all this happens in a split second without you even thinking about it but once the tiger is gone everything comes back to normal isn't it we will talk more about this important automatic response called fight flight freeze response and how it can influence our behavior and our kids behavior in a bit but now let's move on to the second part of the brain called the midbrain or the limbic brain now your thumb which is right here represents the center of your brain which starts developing when your child is one or two years old there are two important parts in your midbrain that you may want to teach your child the first one is called the hippocampus represented by the first knuckle and it's mainly responsible for learning and memory but the second part is the amygdala represented by the second knuckle and it's mainly responsible for emotions and feelings our midbrain is a bit evolved when compared to our reptilian part of the brain because it helps us go beyond just survival and helps us form attachments store memory learn new things and also experience emotions and feelings so we call this part of the brain the mammalian part of the brain or the rat brain now curl up your fingers like so now this part of the brain the upper part of the brain is called the thinking part of the brain or the cortical brain and is the most evolved part of the human brain compared to the other two animal parts of the brain because this part of the brain is what is responsible for helping us make good choices regulate emotions reflect on a behavior reason and think logically problem solve and be empathetic to others but this part of the brain only starts developing around ages five or seven and for some children this part of the brain does not even start developing until nine years of age 
and it continues to develop until the child is 30 years old, which means this part of the brain, which is responsible for higher order thinking like reasoning, problem solving, is under construction in children. When we know this fact, it makes a lot of sense why children behave the way they do. So instead of getting impatient with their kids, especially kids under five, understanding that they are literally handicapped when it comes to logical thinking, reasoning, problem solving, because that part of the brain that is responsible for higher order thinking is not even developed yet, can really help us be sensitive to how they behave. Anyway, when certain things happen to us and we experience big emotions such as anger, fear, or sadness, like for example, let's say your boss elders you and you're feeling really frustrated, so you take a break and go to the cafeteria. And in the cafeteria, someone cuts in line. Well, what seems to be a simple problem might get a very big reaction from you because you're already frustrated, which means your amygdala is activated. Remember, that is where you experience emotions. So when your amygdala is activated, it triggers your fight, flight, freeze response again remember we spoke about the fight flight freeze response which is your body's automatic response to danger well it's a wonderful mechanism that helps us stay safe when there is a real danger such as a tiger or a fire but you see the reptilian part of the brain is so primitive that it cannot tell between what is a real danger and what is not a real danger and so anything that causes big emotions is perceived as a threat to life just like how a tiger or a fire is perceived as a threat to life and so when our fight flight freeze response is triggered we automatically get ready to fight run away or simply shut down at this point, we cannot access our thinking part of the brain to think logically or reason out or problem solve. Remember, we don't pause to count the number of stripes on the tiger. We just take off when we see a tiger, right? So now at the cafeteria, your body will react the same way as if there is a tiger out there. Your heart would beat really fast. Your breathing would become shallow and fast. Your temperature would go up and your muscles would get tensed and you would get ready to fight the tiger. And you might end up saying or doing things at that moment that you might not be so proud of later on when you become calm. And all this would happen in a split second and you would go from a fairly reasonable human being to someone irrational, mean and crazy because when your fight flight freeze response is activated, you no longer have connection with the thinking part of the brain. Dr. Daniel Siegel calls this flipping your lips just like how a pot would if it is too full and too hot. The same thing happens with our kids. When we say no to that toy at the supermarket, the reptilian part of the brain might get activated and our kids get ready to fight us because we have now become the tiger. So when that happens, when your child is mad, when your child is throwing a tantrum, it's not your child. It's the animal part of the brain, especially it is the amygdala who is the culprit. So it doesn't matter whether you are an adult with a fully functioning brain or a kid whose brain is still developing. We all experience big emotions and so we all flip or lit at times and things can get really chaotic and out of control because at that moment, the animal part of the brain is what is running the show. So what can we do about it? Here are five things that you can do and also help your kids do to bring the lid back on. Number one is become aware of how the brain works and that is what we are doing right now. So with your child, create this awareness. Talk about the brain to your child, the animal parts, the thinking part, the fight, flight, freeze response. Be creative and come up with a story of the brain. If you've had a big reaction or if your child has had a big reaction, it is a great opportunity to talk about what happened in the brain once you both have calmed down. Number two is notice your body. Remember before we could flip, it first shows up in our body like our heart beats really fast, our muscles tighten and we tend to breathe fast. So become aware of your bodily reactions and talk about them to your child. Encourage them to notice it. 
because it can go a long way. Number three is practice calm down techniques with your child. So when you notice that you are breathing really fast, try to be mindful and calm down your breath by taking five deep breaths. When you notice that your muscles get tensed, do jumping jacks to disrupt the pattern. There are many things that you can do. I will try to leave a link to some calm down techniques, printables that you can use for your child in the description below this video. Anyway, number four is help your child label emotions and feelings. This is super important because when your child can name a feeling like I am scared, I am mad, it is easy to handle the situation. And as Dr. Daniel Siegel says, when you can name it, you can tame it. So talk or read books about feelings and emotions with your child. And the last thing is to ask for help and encourage your child to do the same. I need a hug. I need a break. I need some quiet time. So those are the five things that you can do. I will be doing more videos about emotion regulation on this channel. So if you found this video useful and if you want to see similar videos like this, then consider subscribing if you haven't already. So that's it for now. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, show me some love by liking this video and sharing this video with your friends. Once again, I thank you for stopping by and I thank you for watching my videos. Until next time, don't forget to be a little playful mindful and intentional. See you soon.